That's where the left and the right need to come together, just like he's talking about, joking about Superman and Lex Luthor coming together. We need to make some common cause on these basic things, shut that down, and then we can talk about some other very important issues. But if we don't have the freedom of speech, if we don't have privacy, if we live under a police state, then we are not going to have any of these other freedoms either. Sorry, go ahead. I, I just... Oh, that's okay. Yeah. They they know that, too. It's mm -hmm. just playing one hand against the other, Democrat against Republican. Whatever I see, Democrats and Republicans is all the same. Oh, yeah. You know, I think it's time for a third party, really, because they're all the same. They On those core games. issues, they are the same. Did you have a comment about Bergdahl? Um, yeah, I don't trust that guy. And what Obama did when he, when he said, we don't leave any of our young men behind, who's he kidding? What about this Marine in Mexico? I find him more important. Why don't we threaten Mexico instead of giving up five terrorists? Why don't we say, well, we're going to give you 30,000 of your felons back, rapists, murderers, whatever. We'll send them back to Mexico. We want our Marine, our real soldier. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's amazing what's happened here. And as, as previous callers pointed out, it's a real striking contrast to see the way they have talked about Snowden and the way they've talked about Bergdahl, I think it's pretty telling. Thank you so much, Cindy. Let's go to uh, Jason in FEMA Region 10. You wanted to talk about Snowden documents. Go ahead. Good afternoon, David. Hey. Hey, I, uh, I don't think Edward Snowden is a traitor, but I don't necessarily think he's a hero either. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that he should have stayed around <clears throat> in the U.S. of A. if he wanted to really if you really wanted to stand his ground and make a message here, you know, and be a martyr for a greater cause. I just think he was kind of a coward for running away. Well, you know, we can all second guess uh, what he did. Um, I mean, I've even, you know, who, who knows? I'm, I'm grateful that the information has come out, even if it was, as some people have even criticized him as, as deliberately putting that out as, as being a shill. But I'm glad that it's out there. I think people needed to see that. It has woken people up in a way that, frankly, they, they were not aware of before. If, if they ever even heard that, because the mainstream media was not talking about what the NSA was doing, if they even heard the stories about uh, uh, the whistleblowers from the NSA, like William Benny, they would dismiss it as not important or they wouldn't really pay any attention to it. So for whatever reason, these documents have basically put it front and center on people. And now the question is, what are we as the American people going to do about it? I think that's really the question. What do you think we should do about it? Absolutely. I feel that we should have more whistleblowers come out and, you know, expose what's going on in this country because there's a lot of shadow business happening and it's really up to us as people to come together and no longer be the divided states of America. You know, we've got to be united. Yeah, together. You, you never know what these people are capable of doing. And so, you know, even though he didn't stay in America and do it, uh, that doesn't mean that he wasn't aware that there was a great deal of risk to him. I mean, look at uh, their reach is pretty strong. Look, at they got Julian Assange. He's holed up in an embassy in London. Uh, and so, you know, that's... Uh, that's always a risky thing. I'm glad that he exposed it, and I uh, just hope that we can do something with it. Let's go to uh, Jake in Idaho. Jake? Hey there. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Hey, I, I just wanted to um, uh, add on to what that gentleman was saying about the uh, Chapter 11 bankruptcy. You had asked what uh, it was, and I, I feel like this issue is um, it, it's an issue that, if their finding is going to affect, you know, 90% of financed properties. And speaking of uh, convoluted and, and all that that you're talking about, what it does is um, the your mortgage has been sold off uh, many, many times um, through uh, companies that are hydras of um, the federal government, uh, uh, Brandy May and Freddie Mac. And w when you think you've made your last payment and you actually hold your title, your mortgage title is the chain of custody has been broken along the way and it will revert back to the, um, back to those government agencies that, you know, they will, uh, in essence, own your land. And, um, well, they've created a real house. mess. That's for sure. I, I, the way that I've heard it explained is that, 
you know, when they started uh, securitizing uh, these these loans, what they essentially did was uh, kind of like putting all the mortgages into the mortgage documents into a blender and chopping them up and then pouring a little bit of it out over here and a little bit out of it of it out over there, essentially destroying them and losing, as you point out, a, a chain of custody. Now, there we had a, a guest on here at InfoWars. He's gone out as a consultant to a lot of uh, county governments because... Frankly, the county governments get a lot of their revenue to support them from recording the mortgage deeds. And always in the past, what would happen is, as a mortgage was sold, uh, it would be recorded locally. They would pay the taxes for that. There would be a, a very clearly documented uh, chain of uh, who owns what. That's been taken away. They've lost that revenue. Some of them are very angry about that and, and trying to stop that. So it's a real mess. Beyond that, we have derivatives that are tens of trillions of dollars that are out there that these bankers want to put sovereign governments on the hook to guarantee for them so they can then come back and claim that the governments have to bail them out. That's the game, the pump and dump game. We're going to be right back with your call. Stay tuned. Big business has discovered the preparedness market, and that makes it difficult to know where to go and who to trust. MyPatriotSupply.com is owned and operated by patriots just like you, has the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more. MyPatriotSupply.com has old-fashioned values and the absolute best customer service in the industry. Look for the deal of the day, unique affordable survival survival supplies that fit anyone's budget. Get same-day shipping on all orders and free shipping on orders over $49. Call 866-229-0927, 866-229-0927, or visit MyPatriotSupply.com for emergency preparedness, self-reliance, and food independence. Shop with a name you know and a name you can trust. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. In the near future. When you realize how fake it all is, the football, the basketball. Security alert. Security alert. This is Homeland Security. Analysis. InfoWars building independent media operations. You let the worst people get controlled and tell us that we are the ones responsible. Prime Directive discredit Alex Jones. Jones is the wildly popular conspiracy theorist. It's a popular conspiracy theory talk show called InfoWars. Alex Jones is now in an Austin jail. These people are assaulted. Targeting of patriots engaged. They are never going to stop. They're never going to deviate from their program until we stop them. Block free iPhone app at infowars.com. Block free podcast and video feed. Imperative destroy Prison Planet TV. You gotta set your eye on the enemy, not worry about what propaganda they put out. Intellectually, it's because you can feel it. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Like an angel, walk like an angel, talk like an angel. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight taking your calls in this final segment. We were talking earlier in the program about uh, David Letterman having CNN's Anderson Cooper on. David Letterman was demanding gun control, attacking the Second Amendment. Kit Daniels just put an article up summarizing that. He has a great quote in here. He says, uh, compare the panel at last year's South by Southwest. He says, compare that to a grassroots 
open carry rally that also occurred during South by Southwest, had over 100 gun owners on a weekday. And he pointed out that the panel that was set up by uh, Bloomberg didn't attract more than just a handful of people, uh, probably less than, uh, I would say less than a dozen from the pictures that I saw. You know, kind of like uh, David Letterman's audience is what I would say. It was a very, very small number of people. Uh, there's really not a constituency out there for blaming reasonable people for the irrational acts of one individual. And as we've learned this week, uh, Elliot Rogers, the guy who went around uh, killing women, posting his suicide note and attacking them, of course, you know, he stabbed people as well as shooting them. Not, they're not calling for knife control. But the real thing that needs to be controlled are these pharmaceutical drugs that are widely prescribed for people. But of course, nothing is being said about that because they sponsor programs like the David Letterman program. They are the major sponsors of most of the networks. Bob in Texas said that he wanted to make a comment about the NSA and the Second Amendment. Bob? Yes, David, how are you today? Doing good. Great. Uh, listen, yeah, I, Alex was talking about the Second Amendment the other day and uh, all, all the gun control they're trying to get into place. And, uh, David, I'm someone that doesn't own a gun. Mm -hmm. I've never owned a gun all my life. See no real reason to go and own one. But I always want to know that if I want to, I want to go get one. There are people that do not own guns that also benefit from the fact that guns yes. are legal and available. If they're legal and available in your area, you keep criminals guessing. They don't know whether you have a gun or not, but if you are lawfully able to have a gun, you very well could have one in your house. And that in itself is a deterrent. Yes, that's absolutely true. And we see that reflected in the statistics. And I've had several interviews with uh, the former, a former prosecutor in uh, Chicago's Cook County, Jim Girock. He's now with Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. Uh, their website is leap.cc, uh, former law enforcement officials, former prosecutors who are against the war on drugs. And as he's pointed out, in Chicago, he knows from decades as a prosecutor there that 80% of the shootings there in Chicago are a function of the failed war on drugs. It isn't the fact that uh, gun control that that gun ownership is uh, allowed there, they hassle gun owners there like nowhere else. And so the people who are armed are typically the drug dealers. And as we see, as as we saw during alcohol prohibition, it's the rival uh, drug gangs that are shooting each other in the street. That's really the source of it. It's not the legal gun owners. We've seen many many cases where they can stop an attack because, of course, even the best. Police can't be there. We've seen the police chief of Detroit tell us that. He says he wants his people in his jurisdiction to have their own firearms because he said no matter how hard they try, they can't be there when a, when a crime is being committed. We saw a uh, mother defend her family from a uh, home break-in using a weapon in Detroit. Now, the police subsequently caught the intruders, but she scared them off with some gunshots. If she hadn't had a, a gun, they would have broken in. Who knows what they would have done to her, to her family. And the police chief there fortunately learned his lesson. He had been a, a, a policeman in California where he believed in gun control. Then he went to Maine and he started realizing, hey, these people out in these rural areas, they're very heavily, a, a large percentage of the population owns firearms. And look at how low the crime is. And so he took that message with him to Detroit. And it's been people like him. People like Jim Girock with Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, they're the ones who really understand what's going on. David Letterman is just looking for badly desired attention. We'll be back tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Join us then. You are listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. This is Scottish John for Infowars.com. I know that most of you here in this commercial already know about the new...